Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon and welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. This is Rudra Pradhan here. Today we will discuss the structure of econometric modeling. So, before we know about structure of econometric modeling, it is better to know its agenda. So, the agenda of econometric modeling is to enter into future. So, that means it is all about forecasting. Forecasting is a process of entering into future by using past and present information that is with respect to econometric inputs and econometric outputs. Econometric inputs includes the theory, basic theory, the problems, mathematical theory, statistical theory, information what we call data, stat, uh, statistical tools like softwares, computing methodology and knowledge interpretation etcetera. In the output sites, so it includes estimations, inference, forecasting, evaluations and assessment. So, now, so forecasting is all about to integrate the econometric inputs and econometric outputs. So, now, so how we have to do all these things? So, it is basically, basically the question of entering into the futures or future development. So, future development basically function of past informations and present informations. Okay. So, now, so it is the question of solving complex problem into simplex problems. Now, the question is how? So, there are there are various ways we have to do. There are many you can say criteria you have to or you have to de design. So, now I will give you the indication how econometric model can help to solve this particular uh, you can say uh, issue. So, econometric modeling basically based on certain steps through which we can solve any particular problems. So, now the structure of econometric modeling starts with the, the problem statement. Okay? So, the step 1, step 1 process is problem statement. Okay? which basically derives from existing theory. Okay, so, problem statement we have to derive from theory. Then step 2, in the step 2 we have to transfer the problem into mathematical form of the models, mathematical form of the form of the model. Okay. So, now what is all about mathematical form of the model? It is just the transformation of raw information into certain mathematical equations. Okay? So, it is the theoretical uh, uh, transformation of theoretical information into quantitative information. So, basically a, it is an indication of deterministic models, it is an indication of deterministic model. Okay? So, now once you have mathematical form of the model, then it has to be transferred into statistical form of the model. So, the step 3 process, step 3 process is nothing but statistical, statistical form of the form of the model. Okay. So, now once you have statistical form of the model, it is nothing but stochastic model, it is nothing but stochastic model. 
all right. So, now we move to step 4, the step 4 process is that you need to have informations which we call it data. So, data has to be there to investigate the statistical models. So, that means the whole idea is we have to bring a problem from the existing theory, then that problem has to be transferred into the mathematical form of the model, then that mathematical form of the model can be transferred into statistical form of the model. So, now our objective is to investigate the statistical form of the model. So, that means we have to verify the existing theory and existing problems. So, now to do that you must have a information. So, that, that is what we call it data. So, now once you have a data then you have to process it properly. So, now in the step 5, in the step 5 we the data has to be you can say process through some econometric techniques. So, then we have we have we have the component called as a estimated models okay, or model estimations or model estimations, model estimations. Okay. So, now one you have estimated model then next step is, is the reliability of the models. So, step 6 we have reliability reliability of the estimated model, okay. reliability of the estimated model. So, now the step 5 is very crucial here, because uh, uh, before this uh, step there are certain procedures and after this step there are certain procedures. So, it is the middle between this uh, uh, econometric structures. So, now what is all about the model reliability? Model reliability basically deals with certain you can say procedures. Let us uh, once again I write it here step 6, this is what it is called as a model reliability, which is derived through mo model estimations. Okay. So, model reliability is basically basically three uh, three uh, components one is called as a goodness of a test good, goodness of fit test okay then second is specification test specification test then third is called as a out of sample prediction test out of sample prediction test. So, that means, that means once you have estimated models, so next step is the model reliability. So, model reliability uh, deals with three tests. So, test 1, test 2 and test 3, okay. test 3. So, test 1 deals with goodness of fit, test 2 deals with specification test and test 3 deals with out of sample prediction test. So, now once you go through all these tests, so we have two different answers yes and no, okay. yes and no, then again yes and no. All right. So, now if it is every case if it is no then then we have to proceed further we have to proceed further to step called as a you can say go to step 2 okay so that means if the mod estimated model is not reliable we have to go back to step 2 that is what it's called as a mathematical form of the models so now the mathematical form of the model again transfer into statistical form of the model, then again that has to be verified through available information, then again you have to process it, get the estimated model, then again you have to go for reliability check, again you have to continue with yes no situation, then if again no you have to go back to again step 2. However, 
if it is yes if it is yes then you have to proceed to step 7. So, every time if it is yes 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 then you have to go for step 7 you have to go to step 7. So, now the question is what is step 7. So, let me explain here what is step 7 here. So, now the model step 6 here step 6 this is model reliability model reliability. So, now this is this is test 1 this is test 2 this is test 3 this is nothing but goodness of fit test this is nothing but specification test and this is out of sample prediction test. So, obviously it is no situation a yes situation obviously it is no situation and a yes situation obviously it is no situation and a yes situation. So, now when uh, in every test gives no 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 then obviously we have to go to step 6 steps 2. So, now if it is yes if it is yes if it is yes ok. So, then you have to go for step 7. So, now this will give you step 7 overview ok. So, what is step 7? So, now step 7 is basically deal with the interpretations interpretation of the existing estimated models. So, now once you interpret then next step you have to proceed for uh, hypothesis testing hypothesis hypothesis testings ok hypothesis testings right this is step 8 step 8 information is the hypothesis testing. So, now this is what we have to derive from you can say specification test ok. So, now so far as the interpretation is concerned we have to go for hypothesis testings then we have to move to step 9 step 9 step 9 is nothing but forecasting step 9 is nothing but forecasting. So, now this forecasting forecasting has to be go to step 10. So, now the step 10 process is go for future future development future development which is otherwise called as a policy use ok. This is what the complete process of econometric structures. So, basically economic structure starts with the existing theory within that theory we have to find out the problem that problem has to transfer into mathematical form of the model then mathematical form of the model has to be transferred to statistical form of the model then our objective is to investigate that theory through proper econometric tools. So, now to verify that theory or to apply that econometric mo uh, model for that problem. So, we need we need information. So, now once you have information you get the estimated model. So, now that estimated model has to be checked that is nothing but reliability part. So, reliability part is basically a three specifications that is you know three different tests. So, one is called as a goodness of fit test, specification test, then out of sample prediction test. So, now every test will give yes no results. So, now if it is a no answer is no then we have to go to step 2 again. So, that is nothing but mathematical form of the model again the system will continue like statistical form of the model data then estimated model then again you have to go for reliability check. So, again you have, you have answers yes no. So, if it is again no then again you have to go to step 2. So, now uh, if it is yes then you have to interpret the estimated model. So, the moment you will interpret the esti uh, interpret the estimated model. So, you have to uh, go for hypothesis testing which which we have basically derived through existing statement or problems 
what is all about uh, hypothesis? Hypothesis basically it is a statement which is not verified, which has to be verified. So, that means for verification we need to have a information, you have a tools, then you have to process it, you have the estimated model, then you have to go for testing. So, now the moment you have uh, test results, then you can apply that model for forecasting. So, that means if the estimated model is reliable, then obviously a, it has to be gone through testing of hypothesis. Now, if the hypothesis testing is a, a you can say feasible one or it is you can say co considerable one, then obviously we have to consider that model for forecasting. So, now once you have forecasting, then it will give you the direction or path for future development. So, that means that model can be utilized for any policy, by policy use. So, this is what the complete st structure of you can say econometric model. Let me let me uh, explain the details with a very beautiful examples. Let us take a case of it is a case study. So, now the case study is a museum. The museum it is running in loss, the museum is a running in loss and your assignment is to transfer this loss making unit to profit making unit. So, this is the typical problem which we have received from, from a particular department. So, now the problem is very clear here, the museum which is running in loss, your assignment is to transfer this loss making unit into profit making unit. All right? So, now how to do that? There are several setups or structure which we can transfer this loss making unit to profit, profit making unit, but here our agenda is whether econometry model can be used to transfer this loss making unit to profit making unit. If you ask me question, obviously the answer is very much yes. So, now the question is how? Before we apply econometric model to this particular problem, let us first go through the existing setup or theory, what is all about this problem. The problem is that for any particular business, the status of business depends upon its low profit and loss account. Okay? So, the status of a particular business depends upon profit and loss account. All right. So, now profit and loss usually represents the indicator of or performance of a business. So, in business environment profit is represented as the component called as a pi. Okay. So, pi is the value which can determine the position of the business. So, whether it is profit save or loss saves. This pi has a three different structures, one is called as a pi greater than 0, pi less than 0 equal to 0 and pi less than 0. Okay? So, now if pi greater than 0, this business term is called as a super normal profit. Okay? So, now if pi equal to 0, it will give indication normal profit, okay? it will give indication to normal profit. If it is less than 0, it will give indication to loss. Okay? So, now, so what is super normal profit, what is normal profit and what is loss? So, let me uh, first highlight what is pi. Pi is the profit function which basically depends upon two components, one is called as a R component, another is called as a C component. R represents revenue and C represents cost. So, that means the problem is very clear here. We like to know what is the shape of this particular business. The shape of particular business depends upon profit function and profit of a particular business unit depends upon its earnings which we call it revenue and its cost which we call it expenditures. 
So, now the difference between earnings and expenditure will give you the shape of the business. So, now one side we have revenue, another side we have cost. So, now the difference will give you indication about the size of profit R minus C. So, R minus C will give you indication about the shape of the profit. So, now if you will say super normal profit, then it is nothing but R minus C, R minus C should be greater than 0. Now, for normal profit, the structure of R minus C must be equal to 0 and uh, for, uh, uh, for this loss situation, this R minus C must be less than 0. So, now if R minus C greater than 0, so it is an indication that R should be greater than C. Now, if R minus C less equal to 0, then it is nothing but R equal to C. So, now for this, it is an indication of R must be less than C. All right. So, now the question is what is R? R is basically R is basically revenue and it depends upon it depends upon two components price component and quantity components. That means, P represents price of this business or product, then Q represents quantity of this particular business. Okay. So, this is the entire structure of you can say profit and loss account of this particular business. So, now for this particular problem, now for this particular problems, we are in the position of pi less than 0. So, now when we see the loss making organization or loss making business, then obviously, pi is less than 0. So, that means, the existing problem that means, the existing problem is pi less than 0, but our assignment is to transfer this existing problem into profit safe. So, that means, we need to transfer y should be greater than equal to 0, y should be greater than to 0. That means, so what is pi here? Now, pi greater than 0 means we must have a revenue and we must have cost. So, that means the transformation rule should be r greater than equal to c. So, now how to do that? So, we need to have pi. So, that means if I will put it in mathematical form, then obviously pi is function of r and c. So, that is nothing but r minus c. So, now we have three different strategy altogether. So, what is the strategy? So, strategy 1. So, now strategy 1 pi can increase means pi increase depends upon various strategy. Strategy 1 first r will increase provided c remain constant. Okay. Then strategy 2 r can be constant provided c must be decrease. Okay. So, now strategy 3 where r can be increase in the same time c can be also increase, but r increase must be greater than to c increase. Okay. So, we have three different strategy altogether to transfer this loss making unit to profit making unit. So, now the first strategy is very effective in the short run. Okay in the short run, but strategy 2 strategy, strategy 3 is the long run impact. Okay. So, now in the meantime for this particular problem, we have to take one strategy. Let us start with the strategy 1. Okay. What is strategy 1? Strategy 1 is pi has to be increase provided r has to be increase and c has to be constant. 
So, now what is all about R increase? So, R increase means it is the question of P and Q movement, because revenue is a function of price and quantity, price and quantity. So, now how to do that? Because okay, I will come, come here again. So, now this R, R depends upon price and quantity. So, now how to do that? So, now uh, again we have three different strategy, again we have three different strategy. In fact, first strategy, strategy 1 P increase Q, Q as usual uh, remain constant, strategy 2 P decrease or as usual Q is in normal, then strategy, strategy 3 P remain constant, okay. but if we remain constant then Q remain constant. So, that means strategy 3 cannot be possible. However, first strategy and second strategy can be very effective tool for solving this particular issue. So, now whether you will go for price increase or price decrease, because price increase and quantity increase cannot be go simultaneously, because the if you will go by you can say market principles, then obviously the structure is something different. For instance, so the uh, structure is revenue equal to price into quantity, but you know uh, if you will go by market model then Q equal to function of price. Okay? So, that means it is the P which influence Q. So, that means here whatever uh, items we have mentioned here, they remain silent. I, its increase decrease depends upon the movement of P, a, P increase and P decrease. So, now whether we will go for P increase and P decrease, it has to be certain procedure, it has to be certain procedures. So, now whether you have to go for P increase or P decrease, so we have to proceed further for its uh, you can say structures. So, now uh, for loss making organization, loss making to profit making organizations. So, we have to use revenue increase strategy where cost remain constant and within the revenue increase strategy, we have P increase strategy and P decrease strategy. So, obviously, Q will change accordingly, obviously Q will change accordingly. So, now whether you will go for P increase or P decrease. So, now it depends upon the concept called as a EPT price elasticity, which is usually derived through market models, market model. So, that is why theory usually plays fantastic roles. So, uh, in the earlier concept I have mentioned revenue equal to price into quantity and the difference, uh, the difference of revenue minus cost will give you the profit structure. This is the complete market model and which we have derived from the existing information or theory. So, now uh, to transfer this loss making unit to profit making unit, then obviously we have certain procedures or you can say structure, so that we have to follow and uh, apply accordingly the business strategy can be you can say uh, implemented. So, now what is all about this uh, you can say uh, price elasticity. So, now price elasticity basically let me explain here price elasticity. So, price elasticity basically here depends upon two things E p greater than 1 and E p less than 1 all right. So, now before I explain this concept E p greater than 1 and E p less than 1, let me highlight one thing here. What is all about price elasticity? Price elasticity represents the degree of responsiveness of change in quantity with respect to its determinants and price is one of the determinant of these problems. So, now the movement of price will affect the movement of quantity. So, now, so we have to target price 
then obviously quantity will be quantity will be get affected. So now what you have to do here? So the moment if when e p greater than one, then the structure of the relationship between price e p means it is the relationship between price and quantity, keeping other things remain constant. So now this side I will measure quantity, and this side I will measure price. Then obviously the existing setup with respect to e p greater than one is like this. All right. So now this is called as a market demand curve and another side when e p less than 1 the structure of demand curve is like this, this is also market demand curve, this is for e p greater than 1, this is for e p less than 1, it is derived through again the existing theory that is market informations. So now, uh, uh, now we have to see what is the shape and structure of price and quantity. So, now let us take a case here, this is the position original position say P, P 1 and this is Q 1 alright. So, now we have to take here also one, one situation, then this is P 1, this is Q 1 and corresponding revenue is R 1. So, R 1 is nothing but P 1 into Q 1 alright. So, now the moment you will get R 1, so this is the existing current situation of revenue which is the not which is multiplied by price into quantity. So, now I will make a change one increase price and another decrease price. Okay. So, now this is P 2 and this is P 3 corresponding P 2 the quantity information is Q 2 revenue information is R 2 then corresponding P 3 quantity information is Q 3 and revenue information is R 3 alright. So, now the structure is like this way, so this is what the existing structures. So, structure original position, then increasing situation and decreasing situation, this is price component, this is quantity component. So, original position is P 1 then P 2, then P 3, then quantity information is Q 1, Q 2 and Q 3 alright. So, now if we really make a comparative analysis the corresponding revenue is corresponding revenue is P 1 Q 1, P 2 Q 2 and P 3 Q 3 which will be call it R 1, which will call it R 2, which is call it R 3. So, now if we make a look here, then obviously the conclusion is that if we order it properly with respect to ascending and descending, then obviously R 3 is greater than 2 R 2 greater than 2 R 1. So, all right. so, now you come down to this particular component again. So, now here if we increase price, then the quantity will decrease accordingly. So, this is P 2 this is Q 2. Okay. So, now again you go for price decrease. So, this is P 3 and Q 3. So, now this is R 2, this is R 3 and this is R 1. So, now you make a look here this side and this sides. Here a small increase of price will in, uh, decrease the quantity uh, very low rate. Again, if you decrease the price, it increase quantity at a larger rate. But in this particular situation, if you go for high increase of price, then the uh, decrease quantity is very less. But if you decrease price, then increase quantity is also very less. So, that means, so here the structure is that if you go by same strategy, then the sequence will be here R 2 greater than R 1 greater than R 3. So, that means, when e p greater than 1, then we come down to now strategy. Now, you come down to strategy for e p greater than 1, then to get r more you need to have p decrease policy. Okay. So, now for e p less than 1, you need to have a policy uh, for r increase, uh, you must have a p decrease policy. Okay. P decrease policy. So, now 
what you have to do? So, for this existing problem, so we have to check whether e p greater than 1 or e p less than 1. If e p greater than 1, then our assignment to transfer loss making to profit making, we need to have p increase policy. But if your situation is e p less than 1, then to transfer this loss making to profit making uh, unit, you have to go for price increase. So, price is a tool here to transfer this loss making organization to profit making organization. So, now in order to go in order to decide whether you have to go for price increase or you have to go for price decrease. So, elasticity demand or price elasticity demand plays a fantastic rules. So, the price elasticity demand basically elastic in nature or inelastic in nature. If it is elastic, then obviously the value of E p greater than 2 1. If price is inelastic, then the value of E p must be less than 1. So, now when E p greater than 1, then obviously decrease price is the best solution to have more and more revenue. So, now when E p less than 1, then obviously the price increase will have more and more revenue. So, now according to this situation, we have to apply price increase policy and price decrease policy. Ultimately, it will increase the revenue component. The moment it will be increase the revenue component, then profit can be increased subsequently, because we, we have applied the strategy where C remain constant. So, now having C remain constant, then you have to find out the situation how price increase can be a, a applied or price decrease can be applied to transfer this loss making unit to profit making unit. Okay. So, now the interesting thing is interesting thing is, is the price elasticity component. Okay. So, now what, uh, whatever concept we have discussed till now, it is all about business funda. So, that means, we have identified the problem, the problem is that it is a loss making unit and we have to transfer into profit making unit. This is the simple problem, very straightforward, but how to do that? So, for that we need, ha need to have a complete information that is nothing but the market information, the problem information, the existing theory, existing setup. So, what we have done? So, we just uh, collect the information. So, what is all about this loss and profit funda? So, the loss profit funda depends upon the pi value, which depends upon revenue cost structures. So, now pi can be increased depending upon the movement of R and C. Since it is a loss making organization, then obviously R is less than to C. So, our task is to have more R with respect to C. So, for that we have to know the price and quantity structures. So, now the principle is very simple because R depends upon P and Q, but P Q has a mathematical relationship because we have a market theory. So, the relationship between P Q depends upon the uh, structures. So, the relationship between P and Q is like this. So, every time this q is a function of function of v. So, that means, to have to have more and more revenue. So, p has to be instrumental. So, now either p can increase or p can decrease depending upon the situation of price elasticity. So, now the question is what is all about this price elasticity? I have already explained the physical interpretation. It is simply represented as the degree of responsiveness of change in quantity demand with respect to its price. So, now if I will put it in math mathematical note, then it is nothing but P by Q d Q by d P. So, now this is what we call it simply mathematics. So, now how to get this value here? How to get this value whether E p greater than 1 or E p less than 1? Theoretically, we explain if it is E p greater than 1, what is the situation, what should be done and if, we, if, if, if E p is less than 1, 
what is this situation and what has to be done. So, but the question is how to know whether uh, if e greater than 1 or e p less than 1. For that we have to again go for this existing market uh, theory. So, market information or market model will give you information about the price elasticity. So, now depending upon the calculated value of E p we can get a conclusion or we can get a solutions for this particular problem. So, now the existing theory is that q is every time function of p, but it is in implicit format. If you put it in explicit format, then q is nothing but represented as a, 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 a okay, a, it is nothing but function of uh, p and which is nothing but a minus b p say. Okay. So, p is every time positive, q is every time positive, because price of a particular product cannot be 0, cannot be negative. So, quantity of a particular product cannot be 0, cannot be negative. If it is 0, then that means there is no business at all. So, obviously, price must be positive and quantity must be positive. So, now with this particular equation q equal to a minus b p. So, there are two indicators here a and b. So, these are called as a parameters, these are called as a parameters. Okay. A b are parameters and q p are price and quantity. So, now for this particular problem you must have you must have q information and you must have a p informations, but you may not have a information you may not have a b information. So, now econometric modeling plays a role here it is it plays very very classic rule. So, what is that? Now, here econometric model is applied to know the value of these two parameters that is a and b. So, that means, once you get to know what is a and what is b, then you can get to know what is the value of E p only, because the existing problem will give you information like this. For every p there is a q, for instance, if p is 1, p is 2, p is 3, p 4, p 5, p 6, then corresponding p and obviously, you must have a q information, you have q information, you have q information you have q information, you have q information and you have q information. So, now corresponding p you have q information. So, now so p is there, q is there, but a minus b p is not with you. So, we have to first know what is a value, what is b value. For instance, if let us say uh, p equal to 1, then you cannot get q, because we have no idea about a and b. So, if I write the equation say q equal to 30 minus 20 p, then obviously, if p equal to 1, then we can able to calculate q, q. If p equal to 2, we can able to calculate the value of q. So, now the question is what is a and what is b? For this equation, a can be 30 and b can be 20, but you cannot arbitrarily fix this value 30 and 20. It has to be obtain certain process and certain structure and to have that accurate value of a and b econometric model is means usually play plays very 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 fantastic rules. So, now how econometric model is it? you can say very beautiful for this existing situation, but you remember one thing whatever we have discussed till now it is all about the bivariate framework of this econometric modeling, because every time we are handling q and p, but the game is very interesting when you go for multivariate models. What is all about this multivariate model? In that case the q may not be function of p only, it can be something else for instance like this. So, q, o, q is a function of p only. Okay. So, now q can be function of so many other other components p advertising of that particular product or you can say for this museum uh, museum problem if people uh, have no idea about that uh, museum then people may not come forward because museums business depends upon how many customers are entering to that museum. So, obviously, you need to have you can say awareness. So, you have to create awareness among the peoples. So, that is why advertisement plays a fantastic rules. 
population of that city also another factor which can influence the quantity factor. Then policy of that particular area also for instance if there is a harker policy or there is a some external factor like terrorist attack or something else then obviously that factor also have a impact on quantity. For instance take a case of uh, you can say northeast states like you can say Assam, Arunachal Pradesh etc and you take another case Jammu Kashmir. So, uh, the a tourist of a particular place depends upon the uh, economic environment there, business environment there, political environment there. If these factors are not stable, not positive or you can say not in a positive shape, then obviously uh, <coughs> the quantity of the means the customer to that uh, tourist area will be very less. So, only the pricing of that particular product or particular service may not be a one criteria, but it depends upon so many other criteria. That means, when you will go for long run strategy to transfer this loss making unit to profit making unit, then obviously, you have to apply multivariate models, but we have to start with the first bivariate, then you will integrate with the multivariate models. All right. Okay. So, now, uh, 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 now I will explain what is all the all, uh, what is all about this uh, multivariate framework and bivariate framework, but before uh, before I proceed to explain that component let me explain one, uh, one more here. Uh, uh, here when we will go for, for that particular problem when e p greater than 1 and when e p less than 1, e p less than 1 then obviously, the structure is like this and the structure is like this. So, now let us say this is the original position, this is the original position. So, now you are targeting something or you are applying some strategy, so that the shape of this industry can be transferred into uh, some different shapes like say profit shape. So, now for that you need to go for price increase or you can say price decrease, but one thing you remember here. So, we are moving in this particular curve only. So, that means only price which can influence this quantity, but this is nothing about simply this is P, P you can say Q 1, this is Q 2, this is Q 3, this is P 1, this is P 2, this is P 3, but when you will apply th uh, this is very correct when you will apply Q simply as a function of P only, but when you will apply Q is a function of other factors then obviously, your profit of that particular business depends upon the movement of this particular code market demand curve. So, that will be increase to this sides. Okay. So, this side also increase to this side. So, obviously, this has a large impact on this organization. So, the loss making concept or organization can be transferred into profit making organization. All right. So, before I go to uh, explain detail about econometric modeling, let me explain the entire structure of the data analysis. Okay. The structure of data analysis, because I have already discussed <coughs> what is the standard structure of uh, you can say econometric modeling. So, the standard procedure is you have to start with the theory, then you identify the problem, transpose the problem into mathematical form, then statistical form, you must have information, you process the information by applying some tools and techniques, then you get the estimated model, after having the estimated model you have to go for reliability check, if the reliable uh, estimated model is a reliable one, then you have to go for you can say uh, 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 you have to interpret that model, go for hypothesis testing forecasting then its future use or you can say policy use. So, now the issue is what is the entire structure of econometric modeling? The structure of econometric modeling is a part and parcel of you can say statistical modeling. So, statistical modeling again is a vast concept and econometric modeling is a part of that. So, now I will highlight here first what is the entire structure of statistical modeling. Then will bring the concept or structure of econometric modeling. So, data analysis basically divided into three parts, data analysis basically divided into three parts, first part is called as a univariate data modeling, univariate 
data modeling. Then bivariate data modeling. Then multivariate multivariate data modeling. Okay. So, we have univariate data modeling, we have bivariate data modeling and we have multivariate data modeling. Okay. So, now what is univariate modeling, what is bivariate modeling and what is multivariate modeling. Univariate modeling means to design the problem and structure of a particular variable at a time. So, now your game boundary is very very simple and very easy, because it is only one variable which can give you the indication and strategy that is what forecasting strategy. So, with one variable you have to play the game. So, this is what it is called as a univariate data modeling. Bivariate data modeling is basically a, it, it is basically two variables games. So, that means only two variables can explain the entire structure. So, that means uh, how one variable will affect the other variable and other variable will affect the first variable. So, multivariate, multivariate data modeling is the complete structure of or you can say simultaneous simultaneous structure of all these variables together. So, that means, let me take a case here, this is the this is the boundary here. So, we have several variables say x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5 and x 6 all right. So, now what you have to do? So, now uh, if I am concerned about only the uh, structure of x 1 or x 2, x 3, x 4 like this then it is called as a univariate data analysis. Now, if I will discuss about the relationship between x 1 and x 2 or x 1 and x 2 then it is called as a bivariate modeling. So, now if I will target x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5, x 6 all together it is all about called as a multivariate data modeling. So, now uh, there are various techniques available under univariate data modeling various techniques available under bivariate data modeling and various, various techniques are available under multivariate data modeling. Under, bi, under univariate data modeling, the standard techniques are central tendency, dispersion and skewness. Under bivariate data modeling, the standard techniques are covariance, correlation and regressions. And under multivariate data modeling, it is a very huge component and it covers number of techniques uh, starting from multiple correlation, multiple regression, factor analysis, cluster analysis, disjoint analysis, conjoint analysis, discriminate analysis, path analysis, structural equation modeling and simultaneous equation systems. So, these are the complete setup of data analysis that is with respect to univariate model, bivariate models and multivariate models. So, now this is what it is called as a the complete framework of statistical modeling. However, we are not in a position to discuss the entire structure of multivariate data modeling. So, econometric modeling is basically a, a in between bivariate modeling to multivariate modeling. In this particular course, we are basically interested for two things that is regression modeling and time series modeling. So, we have to go through various components under regression modeling like bivariate modeling, trivariate modeling, multivariate modeling and its various problems and under time series modeling, we have to go for autoregressive scheme, distributive things, Harima model, Arch model, Gauss model, Bhar model, so uh, uh, and other problems. So, now for regression modeling and time series modeling, we have to go through series of components and its problem setup. 
So, we will discuss detail when we will go for this you can say econometry modeling in detail in the next class. With this we can conclude this session. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.